Greetings in the name of the Lord. Welcome to our Holy Week hymn sing and prayerful meditation. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his perfect humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Week begins Palm Sunday, where we thrill to remember, with anticipation and dread, the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem for the last time. This happened during the Passover observances when God's people recounted how the angel of death passed over the houses whose doorposts were marked with the blood of the sacrificial lamb. Hear the word of the Lord according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord according to Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
The days following Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem were filled with the most high teachings of our Lord. Passover celebrations were to come to their climax with the Passover meal that Jesus prepared and hosted in the upper room with his disciples. On this holy night he washed their feet in love, foretold his death, and instituted the beloved sacrament of the altar. His new covenant of body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament you have left of us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Following the Passover, our Lord went out to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. This was a final preparation for the horrific events of Good Friday that were to then play out in rapid succession. He was betrayed, tried by the Sanhedrin, condemned by Pilate, and crucified all in a matter of hours. All of it was according to the scriptures and the will of his Father. Isaiah prophesied, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all.
Even as our Lord's death was appointed by his Father, so we also have sure record of his further will that he would burst his tomb and Jesus would rise from the dead. Hear Matthew chapter 28. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the back of the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The famous Easter sermon of St. Chrysostom concludes our meditation this day. Wherefore, enter ye all into the joy of your Lord. Receive your reward. Both the first and likewise the second, you rich and poor together, hold high festival. You sober and you heedless, honor the day. Rejoice today, both you who have fasted and you who have disregarded the fast. The table is full laden, Feast ye all sumptuously. The calf is fatted. Let no one go hungry away. Enjoy ye all the feast of faith. Receive all the riches of loving kindness. Let no one bewail his poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one weep for his iniquities, for pardon has shone forth from the grave. 
Let no one fear death, for the Savior's death has set us free. O death, where is thy sting? O hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and thou art overthrown. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. Christ is risen, and not one dead remains in the grave. For Christ, being risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and dominion unto ages of ages. Amen. So we as Christians, as followers of Christ, into his death and into his resurrection, on Easter Sunday morning, we always love to say, 
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.